June in the Great Plains is often my favorite time of year. Wildflowers are blooming, landscapes are changing, and lightning, supercharged by extreme instability, rains down from the heavens. June of 2023 would be especially memorable as an unsettled pattern would spawn an unprecedented amount of tornadoes within just a 200 mile radius from my home in Denver, Colorado. Storm chasing is a roller coaster of emotions. You ride highs, and you ride lows. And for the first half of June, I was really riding those lows as I blew multiple forecasts and missed a number of photogenic tornadoes. But my luck would eventually turn around come June 21st when a rare late night supercell erupted near Colorado Springs and quickly went tornado warm. After producing a couple of brief tornadoes, the storm remained nearly stationary over the interstate, causing extreme flash flooding in the town of Fountain. I attempted to make my way in until the storm, only warned for golf balls, well, started chucking out a barrage of baseballs that destroyed my windshield. Golf ball size hail, my ass. Jesus. Colorado Springs welcoming me back, I guess. <laughs> if it's one thing I've learned in 12 years of storm chasing, you're doing great. It's, well, Steven. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to have a little bit of fun before the chase. <laughs> Later that afternoon, a supercell thunderstorm rolled off of the mountains and an ominous glow of greens and blues loomed over the traffic-filled Denver metro area. With such minimal tornado threat, I decided once again to find a car wash and see if I could document the baseball-sized hail the storm is now warned for. About 15 minutes after finding shelter, an ominous mass begins to emerge from the rain, and a tornado warning would soon follow. This ghostly EF1 tornado is currently impacting the communities of Highland Ranch, damaging multiple homes and businesses, uprooting trees, and sending panicked residents fleeing for shelter as the tornado gets wrapped in rain. As I close in, debris can be seen raining out of the skies above as the tornado carves a six mile path through the city before dissipating. An extremely rare occurrence for the area. And thanks to the brilliant minds at the Storm Prediction Center and the local National Weather Service, no injuries were reported. This, however, was just a preview of what was to come the following day. Wyoming. Known for its cowboys, rodeos, and beautiful <clears throat> landscapes. Thank you. It's typically a pretty peaceful place as summer approaches. Currently sitting here in Chugwater, Wyoming once again. Our last results were not at all what we wanted, but the sky is looking much better today. Early in the afternoon, a storm is initiated off of the mountain ranges. A lone storm would drift east and instantly display supercell characteristics. While it didn't look like much on radar, baseball-sized hail began falling from the sky, indicating the storm was rapidly strengthening as it approached I-25 near the town of Chugwater. The storm appeared impressive visually, but was having a hard time getting rotation established as I hoped a tornado would form before entering the difficult road network to my east. Over an hour would go by and my frustration grew by the minute, wondering how a tornado had not been born yet. But like the flip of a switch, the parent storm merged with a nearby updraft and the rotation began to increase rapidly and the first tornado was born.
While this tornado was beautiful, the constant dead-ended road network of Southeast Wyoming were making close range intercepts exceptionally more difficult. But after repositioning, I got lucky with the dirt road and I watched in awe as the second tornado of the day was born. Wow. After the incredible intercept, desperation to stay away from chaser crowds put me in a muddy field that was supposed to be a road, and I worried my chase was over. But my RAV4 charged through and I was able to get back onto the main road where I was met with every storm chaser in the country. I even missed filming the best part of tornado number three of the day as it lifted before I could get my camera out. After chaser convergence cleared, I moved in for a closer view before the storm drifted east with no roads. Winds over 100 miles an hour from the surging RFD of a developing EF2 tornado created chaotic scenes as damage was being done near Hawk Spring and the tornado began to get swallowed in rain and hail. Still frustrated with another close range intercept slammed shut I raced back east into Nebraska, just in time to see a beautiful tornado roping out over the open prairie. The road woes continued into Nebraska, and I got greedy trying to take a dirt road east to save time, only to have to turn around due to muddy conditions. Meanwhile, a tornado emergency was issued for Scott's Bluff as a confirmed tornado was charging towards town. I fell so far behind the storm, I thought for sure my chase was over. But slow storm motions and a perfect highway allowed me to catch up. As I pulled into town, a ghostly tornado emerges from the rain. All alone, I move in for the intercept. Unfortunately, just up the road, this tornado destroyed a home, causing EF2 damage before the storm's rampage was finally over. As darkness fell, I discovered the destructive force of the hail associated with the earlier storm. Following the incredible few days of severe weather, this hyperactive pattern didn't stop there. I would document at least three more tornadoes in absolutely jaw-dropping storm structure before the summertime ridge would finally set into place. The seasons may be changing, but the chasing never stops. Until the next time, please like and subscribe for more videos.